Six Sparkle Racing Bucket, bro. Dude, is that an Evo 2 US Grip Tech? That's so sick, man. What is up, YouTube? It's 2.5 Ray S here. Got a little bit of a different video today. I really don't post much of me doing stuff to the RS just because I'd rather be doing swap stuff instead but I do have an RS type of video today and that's because recently I purchased one of these found dirt dirt cheap online the Sparkle Evo 2 bucket and a guy was parting out a bunch of stuff from his garage had this it was literally covered in like dust and dog fur like and I don't have that too many pictures of it before, but this was like brown. There were stains all over. And if you still look carefully, there's a bunch of dog fur still in it. Literally, I tried everything. I detailed this sucker for like almost a day straight of like using carpet cleaner, lint rollers, wet vac, just everything you could possibly imagine. And it still looked like this. Anyways, uh, for those of you who don't know, I do have a set of pretty cool seats in my RS already. I got those seats a while ago and they are pretty special. They're the Japanese version STI seats. I don't know which version, but they're like the 96 championship trim, whatever, special edition, blah, blah, blah. I'm a while ago from a guy in Seattle and I thought they were just the coolest things ever. I still think they're the coolest things ever. But uh, the more and more that I go to autocross, I notice that I get thrown around a bit while I'm inside of them. They have good bolstering, just not enough bolstering. And you know, you can't beat something that's fixed back. Oh, that is why I copped the Sparco bucket there. And so today, I'm gonna to be putting that bucket in the driver's seat. I'm gonna keep the passenger seat the same because I do like those seats a lot. No, I'm not selling them. God, why does everybody keep asking me that? But anyways, I bought a few things because I wanted to make sure that the bucket fit at first. And it, it did come with its own brackets, but if you look carefully on the RS, it's got some strange places where the seat mounts where like two, uh, bolts are forward and one's off to the side near the transmission tunnel and the other one's flat on the floor there, There's like three different positions So I mean that you could drill into your car and just make them fit But I kind of wanted to get brackets and also make them fit properly Brackets and sliders all that stuff is a little bit extra money and uh, If you're like me and you're a total cheapskate, you don't want to spend extra money but I found some cheap alternatives, uh, two of which were eBay purchases. I got this set of eBay sliders, pardon the mess here, uh, universal fit eBay sliders. And then under that, this is a Group S. Uh, the name of it is Group S, I don't know what Group S is. It's a Group S bracket, four buckets. As you can see, it's got every type of position where you could adjust it to whatever bucket you have and it does have all the correct positions of bolts so it will fit for sure and you know I just like the adjustment even in a fixed back I'd like to be able to slide the seat around so and I'm not too serious about sitting directly on the floor so it's all fine with me uh, the, I'll put all the links for this stuff in the description and uh, this stuff was seriously lacking in hardware like I don't even know where this stuff would go it's like an allen bolt and a spacer there's no threads on any of these guys so I had to go to Home Depot and buy my own stuff. I'm gonna hook all this stuff up here onto the slider and then I'll get the bracket for the bucket onto this and then the bucket onto the bracket and then the seat into the car. So here we go. <laughs> Here is a quick update. As you might have seen there, I was drilling that hole because notice it's different on the other side. Uh, these universal rails, they're obviously not meant for anything specifically. It just so happens that this Group S bracket uh, doesn't quite line up with them properly. So it's gonna be a little bit biased. Everything will be tightened down with these two holes furthest to the left. And then this one will be slightly to the right, but it doesn't quite reach that hole. So I had to drill that one and I'll use that hole instead. So everything on the seat will be cockeyed just a tiny bit 
towards the door for the driver's side, if that makes any sense. If I, if I find that it's not very comfortable, I mean, I can always just mess around with it and maybe drill another hole in that side. But for now, I'm gonna let this cool down for a second. Very hot, once that's done, impact these suckers down. And I'm not using washers just because, eh, I don't think there's enough threads. I might change my mind, put, put washers on all of them. We'll see. Yeah, I did, I went ahead and put washers on them just because I was just thinking about it. Probably a better idea. Can't fit washers on the other side because the rails are too narrow. Uh, if I put a washer on it, it wouldn't actually, it wouldn't be long enough. So, uh, wash on one side. It's better than no washers. Uh, here are the brackets. I actually went ahead and spray painted them because previous owner, uh, well, I can show you this other side. It's not as bad on the other side, but these things were totally rusty and paint peely, just ugly as hell. So, a uh, quick little three coats of black Walmart spray paint It's fine better now. Sanded it so you can see what's rough and you can see the little continent shapes where the rust was. All right, quick review on the universal sliders. These guys are unbelievably stiff. I mean, I know the bucket's not in here yet, but just pulling on it. One slider likes to move, the other one does not, and they swap rolls. Very inconvenient. Uh, get what you pay for, I guess. The Universal Slider was like 30 bucks off of eBay. I've seen the Sparkle one go for like 70. So, I mean, this is a really cheap alternative. We're talking like half the price here. And the Group S. God, I don't know those all stupid bees. This Group S bracket, which I did have to drill for, was 75 bucks with 15 bucks as shipping. There wasn't one specifically that I could find for the RS. They're all difficult to look for, but I mean, if you Google it, you can definitely find other results. Generally, it's about like a hundred bucks or so. So even this guy being a little bit cheaper, I just wanted to go with him because it fit for sure. I know Brahm has one that claims to fit, you know, every year in Preza, but that changes around 2007. So, I mean, really iffy information. I just wanted something that was specific and this was cheaper. And I don't mind drilling, it's whatever. Other than that, these universal sliders, Mm, not looking very promising at the moment, but we won't know for sure until the seed is actually in. All right, well, I'm gonna get the brackets on and then I'll drop the seed in and see how I feel about it then. All right, slight change of plans. After putting the seat bracket onto the seat rails, taking them off, putting them back on, putting them on the bucket, uh, I realized this isn't gonna fit. One of the big problems, and you can't see it from here, but the bracket itself is actually wider than the length of these uh, seat rails. Brackets actually come out to about here on both sides, so they're equally too far. No amount of squishing on the bucket or spreading of the slide rails will work because spreading the seat rails too far apart is gonna make it so I can't use this bar, whereas squishing the seat bracket itself too tightly and it doesn't fit on the seat, you know? So the only logical explanation would be to create a sort of adapter plate. I went down to my local steel yard and found these uh, truck bumper bash beams. And let me show them off here. It's about a quarter inch thick and what I want to do is cut these top parts off and use them as adapter plates. So I'll drill one, actually be four holes in total, but four holes and use them to widen the track of the slide rails and use them as an adapter. Let me put those on top, put these brackets on top of the seat rails, put the buckets on top. And like that, here are my beautiful brackets. Uh, I know this isn't really in the cards for everybody at home, making your own uh, brackets like this, but as you can see, I mean, I literally just went to the junkyard and found something that vaguely looked like I kind of wanted it and cut it up. And so here these guys are, they're still kind of hot. I think I'm just gonna sand it down a little bit so it doesn't slice my hand open while I'm hoping, while I'm holding them. Then I'll measure out my holes, drill them, and then put the brackets on top of the sliders and then put the seat bracket on top of this adapter bracket and then put the seat in.
All right, so here is the bracket since the trimming, 2.5 dead S and 2.5 ray S, both smoothed out everything. We drilled four holes, two holes for this bracket to mate with the slider, and then two other holes to mate this bracket with the actual bucket. The holes for the bucket bracket are a lot smaller, and these are actually threaded, because if we use the other bolts that I got, which are a little bit too long, the heads would hit the sliders and therefore I keep limiting the amount of range on the sliders. So these holes are threaded and we're gonna use smaller bolts for them while the slider to this bracket will be using nylon nuts and lock washers. And so now everybody's ready to go together. Ooh, that sucker's a little bit heavier than just the bucket. Mm -hmm. So now that we're ready, I'm gonna try not to scrape all the plastic off. Let me sum uh, it up. Actually, no, I think it's like this. Going that way, you think? Okay. Mm. okay. Darn close. This eBay bracket, I believe it's called the Group S bracket. Uh, I can't say anything good about it because it just barely doesn't line up, but you can make it. Shoot, and there was another problem too. Mm. Uh, sliding the seat back. Mm -hmm. God, this looks really far forward. Sure does. Oh shit, no, this isn't gonna work. Oh, no way. Oh, no way. Okay. Shit. No, this is terrible. Okay. Look at me, I'm like in a clown car. Yep, okay, let's stop that one. Let's pull that thing back out. I have some <laughs> ideas. I have some ideas. Uh-oh. Can you get out? <laughs> Thanks for keeping the camera rolling. Oh yeah, this, this is the best tell. part. This is the part we're putting in the final uh, cut right here. Oh, look at that, his head almost uh, takes it out of the car. Fascinating. I think I've got permanent spinal damage. Look at damage. that, his head has been deformed. So this is our problem right here. Let's get down in here and show that. Yeah, show off our issue. Okay, here's our issue right here. So the seat belt hits the bracket right there. A couple things we can do. If the bracket were to go down, that would solve one of our problems. If the bracket were to come out, but you can't do that because this is already crowded into the tunnel. All right, so if you come in close here, you can see what we did is we trimmed the top part of the original bracket off. You can actually see half of the hole still. We drilled our own hole, which is now completely out of the way of the bracket, just barely, which is perfect from where we cut that hole. So it's out of the way. Seat can slide all the way back to my comforting position, as well as out of the way for the bolt. So now we go back in. Try it that way, huh? That. So it works either way. way. It works both ways. Ooh, that's gonna be a bummer. Fuck. <laughs> this bolt is just long enough. Let me see if we can finesse it. Yes, okay, I finesse it. No impact here, folks. Box in for that one. Box Actually, in. box in for that one. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> baby. Let's see, that's something we didn't think about when we were making that. Uh, Oh, that's not us, that's them. That's the bracket. Huh? Uh, so, with a lot of trimming and rat, tailing, rat tail filing of the holes, this bracket just doesn't quite fit, but it's nothing too bad. So, what we're doing is gently threading in all the bolts, just with by hand, two fingers, and uh, my dad's sitting on this so we can force it into shape and then I'm gently threading them all in. And so I'm gonna thread first these two all the way down and then I'm gonna do this one and I'm gonna do the one up against the tunnel so that way the seat's first pushed back, then down, and then up against the tunnel. These, the threads on these bolts, uh, well they weren't bad but they were definitely towards the way out. Yeah. Look at this, had to trim the bracket because oh, yeah. it is right above the freaking hole. Yeah, and so, I mean, you, you didn't, I didn't need to, but because how long this bolt is, I'm really finessing it when I was getting in, so just trimmed that right off because what idiot designed that? 
Granted, we could have gone so many different ways. I mean, if I decided that I don't care and I just want to drill into the car, we could have just set up the bracket, put the brackets on the sliders and then drilled the sliders into the floor. No, I tell you, I used to do that when I was your age. It's no good. Method. The show where I used two by fours to brace up the seat from the floor. Oh, wood two by four? Wooden two by fours, yeah. What a classic thing. Of course, they cracked as time went by. Oops. Oops. Uh, we had to, yeah, we did. We showed, we cut the top off and then yeah. drilled a new hole. I had to replace the bolt. Yeah, I had to replace that bolt. that out. Because karma, and we did something wrong in our previous life, so just slowed down everywhere we possibly can. But here it is. There's the bucket. It's in. Second, third, third attempt sitting in the bucket. Mm. Oh. You make it look oh yeah, that's not that bad. So now, I want to drive like my female friends. Wait a minute. Or that's not how you're going to drive. Drive. Is this all the way back? That is all the way back. Pretty much, yeah. It's not that, that bad. Yeah, I don't like that. It's too far. Too far? Because you're really reaching there. Tippy towing on the clutch. So I want somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Maybe a little back. Yeah, that's nice. Definitely not getting out of it with the steering wheel on anymore. Yeah. No way. Nah, not happening. Yeah, this is low as the stock setting will go, but this is fine. How do you see all your gauges? Yep, I can see them all just fine. Okay, how do you see forward? Yeah. The sun strips in the way. That's why I was saying I was a little bit too high in the air, but mm -hmm. if I lost the banner, then fine. It's good, I like it. Uh, I can already tell by how far my knee is away from this console. What was happening to me before was I was in this seat, same seat, and my knee would get like, it'd be starting to smack the console when I'm ripping the car to the right, you know, mm -hmm. centrifuge to the right. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm in the bucket, my butt is so far towards the back and my lumbar is up against the back. And I've got this bracing here. My leg can't even reach the tunnel. You can't even touch the tunnel. Whereas before I'd be resting against it. And I'm like, I'm six feet, so it's pretty much normal height. This is a lot better. I like this a lot. Awesome improvement. All right, thank you all for watching. Unfortunately, there was a lot of fabrication in the install, but there was no other way that I could think about going about it without some fabrication. And it wasn't anything too major. It was just getting brackets, drilling holes, trimming, spacers, filing, just simple stuff. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. No extreme measurements were needed other than measuring the holes for the sliders and the bucket brackets themselves. Other than that, this was a pretty great seat. Uh, I want to rate the seat so far. Actually, I haven't even given it a test drive yet. I should hold off on reviewing the seat until I give it a test drive. But the bracket itself, the one I got from eBay, I believe it's called the Group S uh, 98 to 01 Impreza bucket adapter. I'll try to put the link for it. <sighs> that thing kind of sucked, to be honest. Uh, so many scenarios where I had to trim the edges, had to make for bigger holes, had to line up the holes with the sliders, which was kind of BS too. Like it, they didn't want to line up just right. That thing's like a two out of 10. It, it's a good bracket, but shoot, I could have fabricated my own at that point and it would have been better. Well, hold on. And that bracket too, at the end you saw there, I was literally putting the weight of my dad, squashing the bracket and it was just barely in place after rat tail filing the holes that were already in it, barely fit. And then there's the universal sliders, probably the worst part of the entire bucket setup. Things were so cheap. If you go online right now, you look for uh, sliders, universal setups, even the ones from Sparco, they're close to a hundred bucks. Some are even over a hundred bucks. It's ridiculous. So I really cheaped out and bought these garbage, hot garbage. Literally could have bought anything else. Zero out of 10. It didn't fit the bucket, didn't fit the bracket. Forced me to buy those uh, push bar. That's the word. And trim those and use them as adapter plates just so that the sliders themselves could line up with the bucket bracket. And so, garbage, hot garbage. The seat itself though, the Sparco seat, feels great, looks great. I mean, shoot, it's the only problem is that I came and covered in dog fur. So I think the next th step is to see how it feels on a drive. All right, this video is gonna be a couple days after the install, so bear with me here. First of all, love the seat. It says Sparkle where my head is. That is awesome. 
I don't have a harness in, this is a regular seat belt. I'm driving with it, and already right away my knees are a lot further from the center console, so that's a lot better, so I'm not gonna hit anything while I'm driving. Secondly, uh, I don't have a harness, so the seat belt buckle is the stock seat belt buckle, and it's a little bit hard to reach because the RS seat belts kind of flip backwards, so finessing that between the transmission tunnel and the seat is a little bit difficult, but it's all right. I'm totally planted when I'm like wiggling the car and everything, so I do like the bolstering a lot. Uh, I can say for a fact I've already sat in this seat for like, I wanna say a little over two hours at most, and noticeable back pain, especially in the lumbar area because it's fixed, you know. I don't think these seats are meant to be sat in longer than a couple hours. So nothing I can do about that. Uh, I do wish that the padded shoulder areas were just like a little bit wider and a little bit taller, but I like the texture. Uh, it's not that bad, and you know, if I like, park the car with the window down and the sun is on it, it's, like, it's not going to burn me or anything on my shoulders, so I do like that. The fabric's nice, it's breathable, and I can't wait to put a harness in it next so I can complete the whole setup. Okay, and then I did some further testing, uh, some of which couldn't be recorded with one hand and driving with the other. But it did include some high centrifuge cornering as well as downshifting while cornering. Doing Just doing as many things as possible to see how hard I could throw myself around inside the cabin to see results. And I gotta say, I love these buckets. The bolstering compared to the, JD, the JDM seats compared to the Sparco, I mean, it's no comparison. Everybody already knows that with fixed backs. You trade comfort for absolute control of yourself and no movement. And to me, I think it's worth the trade. I could get used to climbing in and out of a bucket. Yeah, it hurts your butt at first, and you can pinch your fingers if you climb in wrong or some other stuff like that, but I think it's worth it. Hit the Evo 2, I'm rating it a nine out of 10. And the reason for that is that I did get it used, so it was filthy. And the other thing is I know the Evo series for the Sparkle Buckets are bigger based on how much you weigh. I'm about six feet, 200 pounds-ish, and I gotta say, I probably would have been better with like, in like an Evo 3 or if, uh, if they even make an Evo 4, I'd be better in an Evo 4 because it's a little bit cramped for me in there. Tight around the butt area and definitely around the lumbar area hurts after a while. But there it is guys, it is in. Like I said, I don't have a cage or a harness yet, so I'm gonna wait to put in a harness until after I have a cage. Just roll with the regular seatbelt for now. Seatbelt's a seatbelt. And uh, yeah, I it's a pain to climb in and out of, but I do like it and it was worth the trade to me because, you know, this is my daily, but I do have a lot of fun with it and I did need something with more bolstering than the JDM seats. Stay tuned for the RSTI series. It's still going very slowly, but will be done. It will be done. Alright, subscribe.